Well, howdy folks. Charlie with Typewriter Justice here, and if you know me personally, or have ever found me at a type-in, then there's a strong chance you've already seen this machine and typed on it. This is my personal Hermes 3000. 1963 Pica, fully restored, recovered platen, handmade feet from Steve Dade, somewhat customized, cotton balls inside the eraser table to cut down on noise because they, why, why didn't they stick felt in there? I don't know. I'll probably stick felt in there at some point. Um, and I should do that. So I guess they did stick felt in there. They just should have filled it, right? Because it still has vibrations. Um, new bumpers on the space bar. New gaskets on those body mounts. New bumpers on the little weird shift thingy. Got all the earwax out of the stupid shift rails, which is almost impossible to do, with, at least without stripping the whole thing down and giving it a chemical clean, which I did to this machine, uh, what, like, I don't know, four years ago. Had it like eight years. Got all the weird mold or whatever the hell that is that forms on the type bar rest. Treated that plastic rubber so that it hasn't formed again. Tuned the spring and that ribbon inside the paper bale. Refed that ribbon a couple of times to make sure it was working right, and most importantly, oh, also did a little bit of custom dent work there to allow extra travel for the space bar so that the space bar linkage never touches this. Ah, uh, cutting down on noise again. Ah, and where was I? Most importantly, ha <laughs> ha! One of the coolest modifications that can be done to an Hermes 3000, in my opinion, if you're brave enough to do it. I switched the tabulator and the backspace because that's a thing that can be done. Oh yes, it can be done. I don't recommend it, at least not for the faint of heart or the people who are scared of messing around with the throw and overthrow on the backspace and the escapement and possibly killing your machine. But I've done it on like a dozen of these now and got the methodology down pat. And you know, I've had it done on this one for, I don't know, five years, six years, I think six years. This is 2020, about six years. I think it was 2014 when I did it to this machine. Maybe a little earlier than that. I'm really not sure. And it still works fine. Never a hitch. What else did I do? Silent return clip has been cleaned and reseated and properly aligned. Cause that's one of the Achilles heel. <laughs> that is the Achilles heel of the Hermes. Oh man. So why am I mentioning all this about this lovely, amazing Hermes 3000 with the deluxe case? Got the lovely taffeta lining, both of the brushes, the manual, uh, rebuilt spring inside the handle. Lovely Naga hide case. Man, so many Nagas died to make that case, I swear. At least three of them. Why am I mentioning all this? Well, cause I'm gonna sell it. That's right, this is my baby. And it's going up on the chopping block. Or auction block, rather. So, uh, 
put a little bit of proof in that pudding. Let's do a little type test. 1963 Hermes 3000, serial number 3170222. One of the only machines that I have a serial number memorized by heart. Oh, I do love this thing. But I'm totally okay letting it go because I have like five Hermes 3000 parts machines and one of them has uh, the techno cubic whatever type face on it, but somebody dropped it. So I'm gonna pull all the type bars out of that one and stick it into the body of another machine that I like the segment on it, but I don't like the typeface. And I'm taking the carriage off another machine and putting that on there because it's got a little funky thing going on with it that I like. And then I'm gonna take the body of another one and sandblast them and paint them. And basically I'm gonna build me another Hermes 3000. And I'll probably never sell that one, but I am selling this one. So, uh, oh, and I have a black and blue ribbon in there because that's my favorite ribbon color to use for daily writing and manuscripting and poetry and other things. Because why not? They work really well. The quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog. One of the things you'll find about a Hermes 3000, at least one of the things that I've found about a Hermes 3000, is that uh, they're remarkably quiet with a decent platen. It's probably one of the most quiet machines I own. Way quieter than my torpedo, which wakes up the whole house. Because uh, it's a torpedo. On the blue setting, or red setting, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. As you might expect from my personal machine, this thing has impeccable print. Alignment test, H, shift H, H, shift lock H. Pretty darn slick little piece of writing iron. And it could be yours. Because, hey, man, COVID. And I got to pay rent. Ah! <laughs> and because I've got a pile of parts machines for these that I can build me another one with a cubic techno typeface. That'll be really nice and fun. And in the meantime... I can uh, have a place to live and a place to work on typewriters and a place to make more videos. So there you go. Uh, look down in the comments for a link to the auction. And I think, you, uh, I think you'll be surprised at how low I'm gonna start this auction because I'm starting this sucker at 99 cents. Because um, I wanna find out what the real value of a super badass Hermes 3000 is because the market looks like it's inflated but it's it's really not I mean the market on typewriters is going way up all around and uh you know people they're trying to sell these for four hundred dollars broken and uncleaned and you know uh that's that's not cool so we're gonna start this one off low and see how high it goes. Maybe, uh, maybe it'll end up in your house. We'll see. Cause it's moving away from me. I'll be happy to see it go. I do love it. I want somebody else to love it too. 1963 Hermes 3000. 
with right hand backspace. Oh yeah. Later.